to analyze different pieces of data. And this essentially helps us with making predictions and all kinds of cool things that we can use to you know, help further our industry. And it's also a method of problem solving. As I mentioned, it's often used in the industry and in our own personal lives, and it can be used to you know, problem solve or innovate. And like I said, it's used by businesses globally. So data science has a lot of different applications, but it mainly just focuses on extracting knowledge and insights from data. However, that can be applied in our society. So this slide focuses on a few questions that data science can be used to answer. So on the surface, you can use data science to kind of visualize or detect what happened in a certain situation and why did it happen. But then going a bit more under the surface, you can look at um, data science can be used in a more predictive sense to look at what could have happened in that particular scenario or what can we do to make it happen. So let's say we have a product of some sort and we see that's getting negative reviews. So maybe we want to analyze what's going on with this, right? Why is it happening? So the first thing we would do is, okay, we'd analyze what is happening and we see that there are, you know, negative reviews that are popping up for this product. And that's something we can also analyze with, you know, the data that we're getting. And then why did it happen? So you might be looking at data of maybe if this is a mobile application, maybe which um, features were used by people and maybe which features maybe led to people to you know, stop using it. So if you basically analyzing this data can help you, you know, draw conclusions about your business or um, whatever you're trying to analyze. And then if we wanna go a bit deeper with this, we can use data to figure out you know, what could have happened by finding trends in maybe um, feedback, like if you've been asking for feedback from a customer when they maybe delete the application, we can be looking for trends in what they say. And then um, what can we do to make it happen? That's kind of just a question we can um, ask ourselves when we're looking at this as well. So hopefully that makes a bit more sense with, I guess, how data science can be applied in the real world when you're, you know, using data science to extract any insights or knowledge that you can get and how it's applied to, I guess, industries and any applications you might have. Okay, and here I just threw in a few words that really summarize, you know, a few big things that data science is being used for. Like I mentioned earlier, data science is such a huge, vast field, and there are so many ways that it can be applied. So here are a few like key terms. Um, I know some big buzzwords today are artificial intelligence and machine learning. They really focus on prediction and how data can be used to predict things. So um, I'll go into a few examples of it later on, but I know machine learning, for example, you could be finding trends in data up to maybe like 2020, right? And then you can be predicting how that, I guess maybe an app will fare, how an app will do on the market as it continues based on this you know, trend line you're seeing with its growth. And visualization and statistics are also, you know, just ways to kind of, I mean, we're also going back to answer these questions, right? Like what happened and why did it happen? I would say visualization is a really good way of seeing that. And like I said, machine learning, artificial intelligence, they're really good for predictive methods as well. So all of these words are just ways that we harness data science in our society, because data science is really, really broad. Okay, so I'm just going to go over a few more examples of data science in our society. So um, first off, most of these are, I say like machine learning applications. So recommender systems, this is something where I guess like maybe if you're on YouTube or if you're shopping online, you will see that the platform you're using recommend certain, I guess, okay, if you're in a store, right? Um, a clothing store, it might recommend certain items that you might want to buy after you have looked at a certain select, I guess, few of items. So this recommender system is made using data and is constantly collecting data. So this is what's you know, powering these recommendations. And it's a really strong application of machine learning that shows how machine learning and data science are both integrated into our everyday lives. Speech recognition and image recognition, they both focus on you know, collecting data. Like, um, like I know some common you know, speech recognition platforms are like Google Home and Alexa, and then there's Siri on the iPhone. And all of these are using tons and tons of data that has basically been collected, you know, try and oh, I guess like identify what goes behind you know, a speech and what goes, what identifies you know, each image. Cause alone a computer can't do these things, right? It's the data that's behind them that really powers them to make these, I guess, identifications when it's trying to you know, recognize speech and images. 
and digital advertisements. This is just another way that data is being used. Data shows, you know, trends and it kind of shows what is happening in the overall, I guess, spectrum of things. So when a company is trying to advertise, they can utilize data to see which advertisements are working, which advertisements are not working, um, which advertisements are making the most revenue for them. So these kind of questions are things that are supplemented by data and that's what makes data science really valuable in this industry. Okay, so I've been talking a lot about data science as a whole. I feel like it's really important to focus on data as well. And I think it's something that's overlooked most of the time as well. So I'm going to just explain a little bit more about data as I guess a separate piece. So first off, Data is really important when you're trying to train any kind of machine learning model or do anything. The quality and quantity of your data is crucial. So this graph kind of just demonstrates how the quantity of your data is really important. Here we have four different machine learning algorithms that are being tested for accuracy. And what we see is that um, as we increase the millions of words being inputted into the algorithm, so here words in this case is the data that's being fed into the algorithm, we see that the accuracy of each algorithm increases regardless of what, uh, of what algorithm it is. So it doesn't matter what method you are using, the data you're using and the quality of that data will strongly impact how effective your algorithm is. And this kind of just, you know, focuses in on that point that data is really important, even though it might be something that is often overlooked. And just, you know, further emphasize that point, uh, here's a quote from Peter Norvig from Google. He said, we don't have better algorithms than anyone else, we just have more data. So that kind of shows how even like having more data can put someone at an advantage in the industry. Okay, and then along with having, I guess, a larger quantity of data, it's important that you have, like I mentioned, a good quality, right? You need good quality when you're looking at data. And one way to do this is to make sure that you have a diversified set of data. Sometimes we will see a bias in the results that come from something you've trained with data. For instance, maybe a product um, that's focused on image recognition may classify certain things differently or incorrectly based on the fact that it hasn't seen too many samples of certain objects. So you really need to make sure that the data set that you are feeding into your model or whatever you are you know, using it for is really diversified and, and is representative of your audience and whatever you are using it for. And I think that's really important to you know, recognize, especially when we do see things like you know, bias in applications and stuff like that. So this really improves functionality and make sure that we are not you know, biasing anyone based on like minorities or anything of that sort. Okay. So now I just like to go over a quick little demo. I'm going to warn you guys beforehand, this is not the best demo and there are a few things that could be corrected with this and should be corrected with this. And I'm going to explain them at the end, but if you do, rec but you can, you know, constantly be trying to recognize this and it would definitely be, you know, it would definitely be good if you can recognize this already since these are really important things to recognize when you're performing any kind of data analysis. So, um, Okay, so, okay, so this is the Jupyter notebook that I have my um, code in. So I started out by, I'm using Python for this, and I'm using pandas, seaborn, and matplotlib. Um, matplotlib is essentially just for graphing things, and um, I use seaborn for linear regression a bit later on, and pandas is just, you know, a really good tool for uh, storing data in data frames, and it makes it much easier to use. Okay, so okay, so first off, I started by importing the data into a pandas data frame. So I have two CSV files, which are also in the folder that this demo is located in, and I just um, stored them as pandas data frames and displayed a mini preview here of the first five lines of each data set. So what I'm trying to do with this data set is try and find a correlation between the number of fatal crashes in a state compared to the percentage of people using seatbelts. So here we have the number of people using seatbelts, the percentage hey, of people- uh, sorry to interrupt, but we can't see the, the program. Oh, you, oh, okay. We can only see the slides. Oh, really? Okay. Um, okay, it says your screen sharing is paused. Okay, each time I switch slides, it st um, stops sharing. 
Can I maybe stop sharing and then reshare? Yeah, that's probably it. Okay. I think it's only sharing your browser right now. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Okay, awesome. So, um, okay, I can repeat what I said. So first off, I was just explaining that I'm starting off by importing the libraries that I need. I'm using a Python for this demo and pandas essentially allows me to store things in a data frame, which makes it easy to use the data. And Seaborn is what I use to make my prediction a bit later on in the code. And matplotlib is what I use essentially to plot the data and to graph it, to you know kind of visualize it. So, okay, so here I'm importing the data into a pandas data frame. I have two different data sets here. And what I'm trying to do is, okay, um, okay, yeah. What I'm trying to do is I'm essentially trying to find a correlation between the number of fatal crashes and the percentage of people using seatbelts in that state. So here's a preview of both of the data sets. Okay, and then in this step, what I did is I joined the two data sets together, only joining the parts of the data set that I wanted. Because as you can see here, there were some other, you know, pieces of data that I did not need for this particular use case. So I didn't include that. And instead, what I included was um, the percent of people using seatbelts in 2014, the number of fatal crashes, and the deaths. Okay. And also what I did is I also renamed the 2014 column in the previous data set as percent using seatbelt. Okay. And then what I did with this data is I plotted it. Um, this is just a scatter plot though. And when we look at it as humans, it's kind of hard to see a trend here. We can see some outliers in the top over here, and then we can see most of them staying at the bottom. So it's kind of hard to see if there's a trend here at all, just using our eyes. So this is where Seaborn comes into play, where I'm going to be using it. I'm going to be using it for linear regression, and we can see what it shows us. So this is the trend that we end up seeing. But if we try and apply our logical reasoning to this, this might seem a little unusual, because what this says is that as the percentage of seatbelt users increase, the number of fatal crashes increases, and that seems contrary to what we would think is true. So this is what I was kind of hinting at before when I said this might not be the best example to you know, show a successful you know, data analysis. And there are a few reasons why this analysis might be wrong. And I'll go over that in a, I'll go over that right now. So first off, um, like I said, using our own reasoning, you know, we have to look at this from our own perspective as well. We can't blindly trust the data alone, right? Because there could be an error in our own methods and there could also be you know, an error in the data that we are using. So here we're going to look at maybe why this could have gone wrong. So first off, the data might be skewed by the fact that each state has a different population. So maybe 500 fatal crashes in a smaller state might have a larger significance than 500 crashes, fatal crashes in a bigger state. And that's something that we have not taken into consideration. Furthermore, we are also you know, comparing the percentage of seatbelt users on the x-axis, and then we have the number of fatal crashes on the y-axis. So we have a percentage compared to a number, which doesn't really keep our units consistent. Ideally, we should be having a percentage on both axes. So to do this, one thing we would want to do is maybe get more data to you know, make sure that we can calculate a percentage for each state versus just having the number of crack fatal crashes. And this would allow us to also get better results. Additionally, the data that we collected from the two different data sets, one is from 2014 and one is from 2020. That's another thing that you need to look for when you're trying to collect data. You want to make sure that they're from the same year because the percentage of people using seatbelts in 2014 has likely changed by the time we got to 2020 because that's a six year difference. So we can't look at the number of fatal crashes in 2020 and assume that it has a correlation to the people who are using it in 2014 as easily as we might if we could have data for people who are using seatbelts in 2020. So those are just a few things that might be impacting, you know, the results of this. And the important thing to I guess, take away is that the quality of our data and our methods is really important. And it's something not to be overlooked. We can, you know, do what we can with the data, but we also have to make sure that we are analyzing our results and making sure they're also reasonable. Because sometimes we will have our own human mistakes when we are trying to apply data analysis that we need to fix. 
So hopefully that made sense. Um, I know if you haven't used like Seaborn and stuff, it might be a little confusing, but these are really, you know, cool app, um, I guess libraries to use. And these are really simple to get started with. I would also recommend maybe, um, I can maybe try and send this out later and you guys could maybe try and find a data set where you can explore, I guess, finding more accurate results and making a more accurate data analysis with this. So I'll go back to my slides. Okay, I think I need to reshare for that. Okay. Okay, so the final thing I wanted to go over was essentially how can you get involved in the data science field? So the first thing I would say is to pick a language. I would say Python's a really good language to start out with, especially since it's really easy to learn and it's just really easy to use as well. It's a really good language for beginners, especially. So you would pick a programming language, make sure that you understand how, you know, programming as a whole works, how, you know, various, you know, um, of the small topics work, maybe like if you're starting out, maybe if statements and stuff like that, just knowing how things work. Then after that, you would want to, you know, learn, okay, so learning the basics of um, how you want to, so if you want to go into machine learning, you'd be studying more of like machine learning stuff, but if you want to go for like a statistical application of data science, you would be looking at, you know, you, you would be like YouTube, going on YouTube, or finding online courses that will help you learn more about like statistics using data science. And I would also say that R is also a really good language, depending on what you are planning to do with the data science skills that you are hoping to learn. After you do, you know, learn on whatever you are trying to, you know, achieve with data science, you need to really focus on practicing. Practicing is really important, especially as you're building up your resume for future, you know, applications, because without practice, you're not going to be able to gain that hands on experience and skill that you will need. And additionally, having, you know, practicing and then also building up a personal resume or like, you know, um, I guess like a place to you know, store all of your projects is really good to you know, show maybe at an interview you can be like, okay, hey, check out this link. It has all of my projects where I have you know, demonstrated all these skills that I have. So that's a really good thing to have. Once you've practiced and you think that you have enough practice to you know, get started in the real world, I would definitely say like, look for some real world experiences. These are really important and they can just, you know, advance that experience that you do have from your, you know, practice projects and getting real world experience would be like an internship or a job or maybe just, you know, volunteering as well. Any experience really helps you also develop your skills and also grow as a person. So those are all really important when um, looking to pursue a job in data science. So that is all I have. If you would like to connect with me, here is my LinkedIn and then Instagram. Feel free to you know, connect on LinkedIn. If you are connecting, please you know, just add a note saying that you are from Code Day and I will definitely accept and answer any questions there as well. So that is it. Thank you all for coming today.